Hi everybody and welcome to Mike Dimensional Online. Thanks so much for coming out again today. Uh, today I want to continue with my series on wine education. Uh, what I'm planning on covering today is decanting. Why we decant, what is decanting, and what the philosophy is behind decanting. As well as that I'm going to touch base on a little bit of information about red wine, serving red wine, different types of red wine. As you can see, I'm still in my work clothes, just got home from work. The reason for that, I want to go upstairs, get freshened up, cleaned up, have a shower, maybe have some dinner and things like that. Uh, but first, I want to fill my decanter with the wine. When you decant, you want it to sit for several hours before you drink it. Um, so that the oxygen and the oxygenation that you're trying to accomplish with the decanter can really take place. Uh, so that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on right now. I'm going to taste the wine I brought with me um, now. We'll fill the decanter and then I'll see you in a while. So to start out, and to help me out today, I brought my friend um, Cabernet Franc from the Sumac Ridge Winery, uh, again in the Okanagan. These guys are just outside of Summerland. Um, this product, especially off their Black Sage Bench, I love. It's a, one of my standbys using this wine because I know the wine fairly well and I think it'll really show well um, for decanting. So let's go ahead and taste it. Cheers. Now one thing I noticed about this wine, it's got a really interesting ruby red color to it. Um, it's a fairly deep ruby red, it's got a little bit of an or orange hue around the outside. Um, it's the 2006, uh, so it's got four, almost four years of age on it. So it's beginning to show the products of age just a little bit. This vintage, they did a really nice job with this wine. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see the color of the camera there. So right off the bat in the nose, I get a fair amount of big fat ripe black cherries, um, some tart black currants. Um, a lot of the signatures of Cabernet Franc, I get a fair amount of, a little bit of charcoal smokiness, um, a nice vegetal aspect which really attracts me to Cabernet Franc. Um, vegetal aspect con consisting of a little bit of maybe bell pepper, um, some slight radish, something like that. And a nice little bit of a pepperiness as well. The tart red currants, or black currants more or less, the black fruit really shows on this wine. The tart black currants really come through. They show a fair amount of tartness all the way through your palate. As well as that, um, you get a nice peppered finish. The tannins in this wine are um, not sharp or anything, they're a little bit uh, cloying. Um, that your mouth is a little bit, well let's call it cotton bally, but more just on the back and it's not unattractive. Uh, it's actually quite nice. It, it makes the wine a little bit more food friendly and tannins is something I'll cover on a little bit later. Also on this wine I'd probably say it's got a little bit of a, a gaminess to it, a meatiness, um, maybe a little bit of peppered meat, something along those lines. Anyway, we've tasted it before decanting. I'm going to go ahead and fill the decanter and I'll come back in a couple hours and we'll taste it again with you just to give you an example of what decanting accomplishes and as you can see while I'm pouring in here just the shape of the decanter hope you can see that just causes the wine to flow and bubble all the way through it and cover the whole surface it really causes it to splash and helps it really get oxygen in there so again the 2006 Sumac Ridge Cabernet Franc uh, is our subject in decanting today. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so we're back. It's been a couple hours. We've had the wine sitting in the decanter here. Um, again, decanting away. The reason again we decant is allow oxygen to get to the wine. Allow the wine to breathe. Allow it to just stretch out and give it its all so we can really expect, experience all the complexity and all the intricacies this wine has to offer. Um, before I get into tasting it, actually one side note, I know what you're thinking, 
am I really gonna have to wait three or four hours after I open my bottle of wine to drink it? Have you ever been sitting there drinking a glass of wine or put it down, you've been in your kitchen working on it, you put it down, you forget about it, you go back and drink it, you taste it again, and you're like, this tastes so much better. It's the same principle um, in doing that. Now, yes, I will say that letting it sit in a decanter is one of the better ways of letting a wine open up. And again, just like anything in life, patience uh, is a huge factor in improving the quality of anything, basically. Anyway, um, again, before I get into tasting this, I just want to go over red wines a little bit with you. Uh, but when you're hosting a party or when you're serving red wine with friends, family, an event, what have you, it's best to serve red wine at room temperature. Again, decanting allows it to reach the room temperature. If you've been cellaring it at, say, 13, 14 degrees, um, it's still slightly chilled around there. I mean, 20 to 22 degrees is usually room temperature. Once it reaches room temperature, red wine can really show itself the best. Um, again, whereas white wine, yes, it shows everything when white wine's at room temperature, slightly chilled, it can be more enjoyable and a bit more refreshing. Whereas red wine shows its really true character and is the best tasting at room temperature. Um, to just highlight different styles of wine, one kind of not too deep example into it, I'm not going to go too far into red wines today, um, of defining wines is by their body. Now you can, a good way of putting it is the light bodied wines, medium bodied wines, and heavy bodied wines. Good examples of each would be your light bodied wines would probably be your Pinot Noirs or Burgundy style wines, um, maybe your Gamay. Medium bodied wines, a good example would be maybe your Merlots or Australian Shirazes, something like that. Heavy bodied wines, uh, you're going to be looking at your Zinfandels and your Cabernets, things like Cabernet Franc, Cab um, Sauvignon, and um, your Bordeaux blends or Meritage, uh, as we're supposed to call it here in North America, but that's a whole other topic in itself. Now, for decanting, you're really going to want to stay away from decanting your light body wines, like your Pinots, things like that. Usually decanting is meant for your medium to heavy body wines, wines that um, are strong enough to handle the oxygen, things like that. Uh, Pinots are a delicate uh, wine, for lack of a better term. Anyway, um, covered a little bit on red wines. Let's go ahead and taste this and see what decanting has done for us um, to the wine. Now one thing that's good to do, especially I've used this glass already, you want to rinse. And the best thing to rinse is, I mean, in any tasting you're at, it's always good to rinse your wine, your wine glass. Um, and especially if you rinse it with the next wine you're using, then your glass is coated in that wine. And it's kind of the best case scenario. Okay. So give it a real good swirl here, get the aromas flowing. So on the nose, right away, I still have the black cherry, but the black cherry comes through more like a, a cooked black cherry in there, instead of a big ripe black cherry, like a cooked cobbler black cherry. A little bit softer, more subtle. Um, I'm getting aromas of, I would say, some red fruit now, some strawberry, raspberry. Maybe a little bit of blueberry. Um, another thing I'm noticing, it, the, the vegetal aspect, which I find quite attractive in Cab Franc, is I'm a savory type person, vegetal just jumps out to me. The vegetal aspect has smoothened out. Um, it's not sharp like you've just bit into a bell pepper or something like that. It's definitely softer and more elegant. Mmm, that smells beautiful. And I've come across a lot of wines that, again, I don't even want to drink them, I just want to smell them. Mmm. You notice I didn't spit that one? It's really nice. Now, on the palate, one thing I've definitely noticed, the tannins, which I spoke about before, and again, that's another topic for wine education. I'll go over them again with you as well. They really smoothened out. The back of the palate is not quite as tart uh, like the black currants I was talking about earlier. On the palate, I'm still getting a nice smoky pepperiness, maybe a, 
a pepperoni or some gamey meatiness. Yeah, and in my mouth I'm still getting just nice rounded fruits now. They've definitely softened up. It's still a very food friendly wine, but it's really soft and elegant now. Um, I'm, I really appreciate what the decanter has actually done to it. I'd be curious if I left this for four to six hours to see what would happen as well. Mm. So that's my two bits on decanting. Go ahead and try yourself. Now this wine, um, just to give you a bit of a review of it, it's again the Sumac Ridge Black Sage Bench 2006 Cabernet Franc. Um, again, one of my standbys. It's a great food wine. I'd have this with a steak. I'd have it with a, a red meat pasta, Italian pasta, some of spaghetti and meatballs, lasagna, something along those lines, some manicottis maybe, um, a big steak, big thick heavy steak, a roast possibly, a big vegetable roast, like a big beef roast with lots of veggies and peppers, things like that, and it would go really nicely. Even a big stew. This would go really well with a big beef stew. I would give this wine, I would say, probably 88, 89 points. We'll just say like 88.5, in my opinion. It's a good wine. Look for it if you can. It's a good value for $20. Uh, you can't complain at all at that price, especially if you try decanting it. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Well, I've covered the canting with you. Hope you found this episode informative. You've learned a little bit from it. Now you can explain the canting to your friends. Uh, one thing I want to mention in this episode, I really appreciate the comments I'm getting from people so far on uh, previous episodes. You have no idea how much I love your comments. I think they're great. Um, they keep me going. They make me want to do more episodes. Um, I'd really like to see in your comments uh, your feedback. Uh, let me know what you think of the show. How's it going? How I'm doing? Is there something I can approve on? Is um, there something that I can talk differently? Episodes too long? Are they too short? Um, give me your opinion. I'd love to know. I'd love to cater exactly to what you guys would like to see. Um, that'd be great. Again, thanks so much for coming out. Maybe I'll ask you a question today. Just give you something to write about. Do you have a favorite standby wine uh, that you've purchased lately? One that that you like to always have around, uh, your comfort wine for lack of a better term. Again, thanks a lot for coming out and um, we'll see you next time.